Dear grade 12 students, welcome to today's English lesson. This is vocabulary 3B. Let's get started. There are two objectives to consider for today's lesson. The first one has to do with identifying the meaning of eight compound nouns, while the second one has to do with matching eight idioms to their definitions. Now it's time to open your books on page 46. This is exercise A. I want you to take a look at these two extracts from page 44, the reading passage, and tell me, where are the adjectives? Excellent. We have kind-hearted and self-centered. Can you tell me what an adjective is? Excellent. An adjective is a word that describes a noun or a pronoun. So one word. So how come? In here we have kind-hearted is made up of two words. It is still an adjective, but it is called a compound adjective. So two words forming one adjective this is called a compound adjective excellent so which two words are they made up of the two adjectives that we have in here the first one is made up of kind and hearted while the second one is made up of two words and they are self and centered excellent well as I have mentioned before, adjectives are used to describe nouns or pronouns. What do these adjectives describe? Wonderful! These adjectives describe a person's character traits. What makes a person kind-hearted? Okay, a kind-hearted person is kind because they have a kind heart. What does the compound adjective self-centered mean? It means a person who thinks only about himself or herself. Well, now it's time to know how can we form a compound adjective and what is a compound adjective? A compound adjective is made up of two or more words and most of the time these words are separated by a hyphen. This is a hyphen. Well, the most common way to structure a compound adjective is to have an adjective or an adverb, then a hyphen, and after that the past participle form of a word. Examples for that include Mike is a hard-hearted man. Hard-hearted is a compound adjective that is made up of an adjective or an adverb hard. Excellent. Hard is an adjective and we've got the hyphen and then we've got the past participle form of the word and it is hearted. Hard, hearted, a compound adjective that describes Mike. I love this brightly lit room. So another compound adjective, brightly, and brightly is an adverb, a hyphen, then lit, and lit is the past participle form of the word. So, brightly let works as a compound adjective describing the noun, which is the room. Moving on, here we have eight compound adjectives and four definitions. I want you to match the adjectives to their definitions. Please pause 
the video and answer. Well, if someone is behaving in a pleasant and polite way, they have good manners. This is excellent. This is well mannered. What if someone is unwilling to spend money? How can we describe this person? Wonderful. We can describe this person to be tight fisted, unwilling, doesn't want to spend money. Which compound adjective can we match to generous? Well done. This is open handed. A person who is open handed, they are generous. And finally, if someone is thinking that they are more important or more clever than they really are, we can describe these people to be wonderful. We can describe a person who is thinking highly of himself to be big-headed. Now I want you to pause the video one more time and match the remaining compound adjectives to their definitions. Well, a person who becomes angry easily can be described to be excellent. We can describe a person who becomes angry easily to be bad tempered. Moving on, if someone is not willing to accept ideas that are different from their own, this person is wonderful, this person is narrow minded. Someone who often forgets things and doesn't pay attention to what is happening around them, this person is absent minded. And finally, if someone is willing to consider ideas, someone who wants to think about other people's ideas and opinions, this person is best described to be open-minded. Great job! Moving on to exercise B, there are eight compound adjectives and a number of statements. Pause the video to answer. Well, if someone accepts other people's opinions, we can describe this person to be, yes, open-minded. Frank is a young man and he never raises his voice. So Frank is Super, he is well mannered. And in here, someone is giving money to this or that charity. So he is giving money to different charities. We can describe this person to be open handed, a generous person. Lisa is always forgetting what she stole. So Lisa is, yes. Lisa is absent-minded. We are still working on exercise B. Fill in the sentences using the appropriate compound nouns. Pause the video to answer. Well, don't ask Nancy for money. She will definitely not give you any. So. Nancy is not willing to give money. She is, yes, she is tight-fisted. My brother thinks he is more important than everyone else. And that makes my brother excellent, big-headed. Stay away from Greg today. He can be very, when he's tired, some people when they are tired, 
they tend to be bad tempered. They can get angry easily. And finally, people who are and don't accept any new ideas. How can we describe people who don't accept any new ideas? Wonderful. They are narrow-minded. I want you to tell me what can you see in this picture? Okay. We can see cats and dogs and rain. And the sentence goes like, it is raining cats and dogs. But do we have that situation in which we've got cats and dogs falling off the skies? This is not happening. So, raining cats and dogs is an expression. It is an idiom. That means it is raining heavily. So, what is an idiom? An idiom is a group of words like this that go in a fixed order and have a particular meaning that's different from the meaning of each word on its own. So, it is raining cats and dogs. We don't have cats, we don't have dogs. It means it's raining heavily. Moving on to exercise C, we've got some sentences and there is an idiom in each of these sentences. What you're supposed to do is match each idiom to its definition. Please pause the video and answer. Well, sentence one, teachers shouldn't turn a blind eye to bullying in schools because it is a very serious issue. So teachers shouldn't, yes, excellent. Teachers shouldn't ignore. Moving on, Paul got cold feet and didn't go swimming with the sharks as he had planned. So what happened to Paul? Wonderful. Paul became nervous and decided not to take part in that dangerous situation, which is swimming with the sharks. So, if somebody gets cold feet, it means they become nervous. Moving on, Mr. Williams put his foot down and told his son that he could no longer borrow the car without paying for petrol. So, Mr. Williams decided to, yes, he decided to express his decision strongly. He insisted on something. So when someone puts their foot down, they express a decision in a strong way. My heart was in my mouth as I opened the letter from the university. I had always dreamt of being accepted too. So, in this situation, I was excellent, I was worried, I was nervous, I was frightened because something big was about to happen. We are still working on exercise C. We have four more idioms to match to their definitions. Pause the video and answer. Well, parents need to be able to keep their head even when things at home get rough. So parents are expected to, yes, they are expected to be calm in difficult situations. Mike and I don't always see eye to eye, but we manage to get along. Wonderful. If you see eye to eye with Someone, it means you agree with them. Stop sticking your nose into other people's personal lives. Why do you care where they were yesterday? So if someone 
is sticking their nose, it means, yes, it means they're trying to get involved in something that is none of their business. And finally, you shouldn't have said that. You really need to learn to hold your tongue. And this is best matched to B. So, if somebody is to hold their tongue, it means to say nothing, even though you want to. Well, now we've got this picture. And what is this person doing? What do you think? Excellent. He is deliberately ignoring the other person. He is intentionally ignoring the other person. So, turn a blind eye illustrates this picture. Well, how can we describe the face in the picture? Excellent. It is the face of someone who's worried or someone who's nervous. So which of these idioms best express the illustration, the picture? Excellent. Heart is in my mouth. Moving on, I want you to fill in the sentence using the most appropriate idiom. Okay, the sentence goes like, My sisters don't with me about the arrangements. They have a completely different opinion. So, they don't agree with me. So, what do you think? Excellent. So, my sisters don't see eye to eye. They don't agree with me. I have one last question for you to answer. Read the sentence and choose the idiom to fill in the space. Well, the sentence goes, although she was under pressure, she and went on to win the race. So she was under pressure, but she managed to, yes, keep her head. She was able to keep calm and win the race. This is the end of today's vocabulary lesson. Thanks for watching and remember, this video will always be available on Microsoft Teams for you to watch at any time.